Hello, everybody. I'm Li Jingjing. It's my great honor to join this event organized by Geopolitical Economy Research Group and Friends of Socialist China. As a Chinese born and raised here, me and my family are among the millions of ordinary Chinese people whose lives have been improved along with the development of this country. And as a journalist, I try to go to all corners of China to see how the poverty alleviation project is being implemented at the grassroots level and talk to impoverished people to understand their situations. In recent years, I traveled extensively to Yunnan, Guangxi, Xinjiang, and Tibet, and I saw how poverty alleviation changed those places. So today, I want to share some useful methods that China used to end absolute poverty, as well as some stories I've personally witnessed. As many of you know, China is a vast country with very diverse geological conditions and a large population. That poses great challenges for solving poverty, because each region, each village, each household has a different cause for its poverty. For example, in Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region, Yunnan Province and Sichuan Province, many people had been cut off from the outside world by the steep mountains. In Tibet, many people used to live in one of the world's most inhabitable places that lacked water, electricity, and food. The varying reasons for poverty call for different solutions. By 2015, 30 years after China started its poverty alleviation project, there were still over 82 million impoverished people who were also in the most challenging situation. How to help them? Targeted poverty alleviation, which I think is one of the most valuable experiences that people in other countries could learn from. I'd like to explain how targeted poverty alleviation worked. First, people in poverty must be identified. That includes pinpointing exactly who are the impoverished people, who needs help the most, what are the reasons that led each family into poverty. Second, precise solutions. After identifying the people, local governments need to come up with specific plans that can help each household. I can give you an example that I witnessed last October in Dali by Ethnic Group Autonomous Prefecture in Yunnan Province. People who work in government or state-owned institutes in that region need to take care of those impoverished households. 200 public servants take care of 600 impoverished households in that region, and each person is assigned two or three households. I followed two young public servants that had been taking care of four families for over two years. And this is the footage I took with my phone. There were many reasons that led those families to poverty. Some had several children that needed to go to school, which posed an extra financial burden to that family. Some had family members who were very ill, costing them a tremendous amount of money. Others had a disabled or elderly loved ones that were unable to work. And during those two years, officials regularly visited these families, helped them overcome difficult times, and helped them get subsidies for education, health care, house building. Even after some families were lifted out of poverty, officials would still visit them to make sure they wouldn't fall back into poverty. Third, transparency and precise management. All the impoverished households were registered in an online system. The cause of the poverty, the year they were enlisted, the year when they were all lifted out of poverty can be found on that network. At the same time, the amount of money that each family gets from the government and how they spend it is also clearly listed. And this is a plate in a poverty-stricken family that I visited in Guangxi. But actually, these cars prove they used to be very poor families. It says Guangxi, um, this poor family tracing and helping contact cards. And it says which city, which village, the governor of this village. And they got out of poverty in 2017 here. And these are all the government officials working this village. 
Uh, and also this card is specifically listed uh, how much money they got from the government and where it goes. For example, this is like uh, the pensions, um, some insurance. Um, it says where, how much money they got from the government and where they spend it. Poverty alleviation doesn't mean to just give people money. How to make it sustainable is something many poverty alleviation commissioners have been dedicated to solving. Building roads and infrastructure, providing farmers professional skills training, establish agricultural cooperations, bring companies that are interested in buying products from those villages, and most importantly, provide educations, especially for the young generations, so they will forever have the tools to improve their lives. In Guangxi Mula Ethnic Group Autonomous Prefecture, I saw kids of different ethnic backgrounds that used to live in remote mountains being moved into brand new schools equipped with top-level educational materials and staff. <laughs> China's Poverty Alleviation Project focuses on building infrastructure, houses, education, medical care, jobs, and protect the ecosystem at the same time. But that job wouldn't be accomplished without the 200,000 government staff members at all levels that went to villages as poverty alleviation commissioners. I have a colleague who went to Da Liangshan in Sichuan province and made a documentary called Working in China's Poorest Village. He shadowed a poverty alleviation commissioner for weeks trying to do what he did, and the workload is beyond expectations. The job is 24-7. The commissioner told villagers they can call him if they need any help with anything. And by anything, he meant anything. From repairing a broken rooftop, how to learning to better raise a cow, to addressing issues with neighbors, and for tips on properly raising a kid. Even though absolute poverty was ended by the end of 2020, the commissioner will continue to stay in that village for another year because he needs to make sure those villagers won't fall back into poverty. Those officials build a close relationship with villagers. By being fully committed to a village, many of them have to leave their own families, their own children behind. 700 poverty alleviation commissioners sacrificed their lives doing poverty alleviation work. Among them was a girl named Huang Wenxiu, who was caught in a landslide on her way to fix a pipeline for the village. She was only 30 years old when she passed away. Absolute poverty was ended in 2020, but that doesn't mean the poverty alleviation work has ended. China continued to improve the lives of people in less developed regions, working on solving relative poverty and revitalizing rural areas. Honestly, before I started my journey to the rural regions, poverty alleviation was just a bunch of numbers and policies I saw on the news and in books. I never realized how difficult it was and how life-changing it was to the millions of people there until I actually went there and talked to them. All these policies are people-centered. Poverty alleviation has always been a top priority of the government, no matter in short-term or long-term plans for the past 40 years. Improving the well-being of people, improving the life of people, has been the goal of government work. Thank you.